Mike Grease joined a group of 24 fellow British railway enthusiasts who flew to Johannesburg in 1972 to catch on film steam operations in Southern Africa. This is the second reel of his cine film, and it starts in the Garrett hotspot of, of Peter Maritzburg. And I'm delighted to be joined by Mike from his home in Germany. Um, reel one consisted of uh, Eastern Transvaal, Mozambique and uh, Northern Natal. And um, this is the second reel. Um, which can start in Peter Maritzburg, which in, in those days was a, was a Garrett locomotive hotspot uh, with mostly freight trains, but some passenger trains. And what you're about to see um, is the, um, the line from Peter Maritzburg to the junction here was called Franklin. Um, this is a train here uh, on the on, on, the, on the other line, which went from Peter Maritzburg towards Kranzkop. And this, this guy here, this guy hanging out of the window was, was uh, Andrew Turk, who went to South Africa in 1971. Now, this is the other line. This is the main line, shall we say, with, which had passenger trains from uh, Peter Maritzburg to um, Franklin and then branch to Kokstadt and Martitila. Uh This is a Saturday only train which carried um, the Bantu uh, black people from their workplaces during the week to their homes in the countryside. Now these GMA locomotives were built by North British and Henschel. There were quite a lot of them, I think something to, to the order of 90 altogether. And the trains were quite slow, so it was even, uh, possible, it was quite easy to chase by car. We were four people in a car. The um, service also had two night trains. Uh, so heavy was the traffic at night time. It was uh, not very terribly far from Peter Maritzburg to the end of the line at Kokstadt and Martitida. Uh, but the train stopped everywhere and it was a very slow journey, but nevertheless, it was worth running two night trains, which took about eight hours. I've still got my 1972 South African Railways timetable and for nostalgic reasons, I tend to look at it from time to time. But the passenger train scene is very much depleted in South Africa today. And since steam has been gone for more than 30 years, uh, uh, and the country has become very much motorised. There's not a, not a really, there's not really a need for passenger trains. These pictures are quite historic, I suppose, because uh, these Garrett locomotives were all withdrawn in 1974. Uh, and the line became dieselized. Mike, it looks like the, the line is quite steeply graded. Sure is, yes. It's quite, that, that, that is why they have these articulated locomotives in use, because the, the gradients are 1 in 40, 1 in 30. Uh, and uh, being a Saturday afternoon with no inspectors around, we managed to get a footplate ride on the engine, a very cooperative loco crew. And I even spent 10 or so minutes on the, on the roof and uh, on the front water tank. Were all freight trains double-headed on that line? Yes, it was nearly all double-headed. Double and the two, the, two, the two wagons in the middle are for water. Uh, as there were a few opportunities to take water. 
Did they have to stop for coal as well, or was there enough coal in the bunkers? No, there were, no, I think they had enough for, for that. Um, some, some of the locomotive depots, certainly uh, the, the locomotive depot um, at Bloemfontein in the Orange Free State, and 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 uh, that they are on the main line from Cape Town to Johannesburg at what was known as the coal stage, and. Uh, Four axle wagons were pushed up by a steam locomotive on a pretty steep gradient onto the coal stage. Um, later on, in reel four or five, there's the scenes of uh, this guy, this in, in action. These these freight trains were all mixed traffic, or were they? Yes, the, uh, the, the, the law of the land in the apartheid era of South Africa was that any distance over 50 kilometres had to be by rail. There was no um, um, free, free market of um, moving freight from A to B. Uh, the law stated that it had to be by train if it was more than 50 kilometres. And there wasn't a very built up network of roads either. Uh, it wasn't until after the end of apartheid in uh, 1991, the uh, motorways were built. There were motorways in the Greater Johannesburg Pretoria area, but there were. I do remember that the main N2 road from East London towards um, Bloemfontein wasn't even tarred in 1972. Now this is coming into Franklin. Now in Franklin there was a uh, a, a, a locomotive depot. And just past Franklin is, is Donnybrook. And in Donnybrook, there was a narrow gauge, that means two foot gauge uh, line to Icopo and the South Coast. This part of the world is sugarcane country. And most of the trains on the narrow gauge were for the transportation in the harvesting season of sugarcane. Though I never found out where the refinery was. Uh, do you remember what class of locomotives these are? These are uh, NGG, which stands for narrow gauge Garrett 15 and 16. Some of the NGG 16s were quite modern. They were built by Hunslet in the UK in Leeds in 1968. Uh, and I gather a couple of them are on uh, the Welsh Highland Railway now. So this train will be a block train of sugar beet or sugar beet empty wagons. Well, it seems to be empty. It seems to be empty wagons. It's probably an empty run from uh, from the refinery to uh, uh, pick up some more cane. I'm not entirely, entirely sure. This this trip was in all, uh, latter end of August, uh, which is the uh, the early spring on, in the southern hemisphere. August of which year, Mike? 1972. That fellow on the left is David Thornhill. Sugarcane and pit props. This was a, quite a heavily wooded area and uh, uh, trees were chopped down and made into, made into uh, pit props for the coal mines in the Transvaal. And it was a very long-winded process of uh, um, transferring uh, heavy goods like prick pops from the narrow gauge wagons onto the onto the, stand, onto, onto the three foot six gauge wagons. Well, 
All these narrow gauge lines uh, closed in 1986. This part of South Africa was very British. I remember we stayed in Icopa in the Plough Inn, which, which could have been in, Ox in Oxfordshire. As I had quadrupled my salary from UK to Frankfurt, uh, I took about 25 rolls of film. And in those days, a roll of film was four minutes uh, and cost about one pound 35 P in today's money. But I found a source at the Continental Railway Circle in London, which, went, which met once a month where, where a guy sold 10 packs for a bit less than that. I take it you were able to chase this train to a number of different locations. Oh, yes, it was. Yes, yes. We, we, we had a car for three weeks. Uh, we hired it in, um, in, in Johannesburg Airport, and uh, I didn't have a driving license then. We were, Dave Saul and, and I, we, we both didn't have car driving licenses, and there was another chap and his wife who both drove, and they did all the driving. Much to our surprise, uh, the car hire company allowed our car to be driven into Mozambique and in real one, there's some scenes of Mozambique railways. I think my scenes of Mozambique railways are really quite unique. I don't know any other source where there's action of Mozambique anywhere. In those days, Mozambique was still a Portuguese colony and it was quite... Um, um, was quite uh, free and uh, no, no no photographic problems. But in 1973, I went for two days, uh, and the terrorist Free Lima organisation were active, and uh, the security was much tougher. Were good maps easy to come by so you could find the railway lines in relation to roads? Yes, the, 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 South, the South African Tourist Office in London had a, a pretty good organisation and uh, we were able to uh, gear, gear up to our planning. What, what, what we did, we were, we were 25 people who flew out together from um, Heathrow to Johannesburg on a 747. That was my first flight ever. Uh, and there were people among the group who I still know today. Uh, some were photographers and some were just track bashers. And those who were track bashers did their own thing when they got to uh, uh, when they got to uh, Johannesburg. We didn't make any hotel arrangements except on the first night. Uh, and those of us who elected to go to Mozambique um, had a hotel reservation made in advance in Lorenco Marks where I do recall um, that we had to wear a jacket and tie. That was obligatory uh, in the Renko Marks in 1972. And we all, a hotel reservation was made in Butterworth in, in the Trans Sky also, because it was planned that Group A and Group B in photographic cars would meet on a certain date and exchange the, what, the, the information about, about what they'd seen. There were no mobile phones or internet in those days. So what? Was, was seen on route was by word of mouth. And I think from memory, we had these cars for about two and a half weeks. And we, we, we met in Butterworth uh, um, at a certain hotel um, about on day six or seven. Uh, we saw a brief glimpse back on the, um, the main line and then they were, we're back now on this narrow gauge line. This is... Um, this is the Underberg branch, which branched off from, 
from uh, from Donnybrook to Underberg, which is just a, um, a, a small small town. It's the only occasion where I, where wherever I filmed a GCA garret, which was a two six two garret built in Germany in, in Hanover, not far from where I live in. 1928. Now, after after we'd uh, uh, cleared all the lines uh, on, on with with the garrets, uh, we then had a, a lengthy drive uh, from um, uh, from Donnybrook to um, the line from Umtata to East London, which I guess was was something like maybe four hours. And and this is what is known as the the Transkei region. This is a, a to put it impolitely, a blacks only um, zone. Um, and um, there weren't many trains on uh, this line. It ran from East London to uh, the end of the line was um, was Umtata, and still is. It's still open today. Uh, and it was originally planned to link the, the, this line with the, with the line where the Garrett's operating, but it's, a, it's mountainous countryside, and it was never fulfilled. Um, the main train was three days a week, um, and I suspect that this is what this is. And it left uh, it left uh, East London about two o'clock in the afternoon and uh, reached Umtata in the middle of the night. Uh, and there were a couple of mixed trains as well, but it was all 14 CRB class. And the 14 CRB uh, were, were built by um, American and Canadian builders for with very small driving wheels for climbing on very steep gradients. So here the trains were very slow and it was quite easy to chase by car. So what wheel arrangement are these? 482, it's a 482 class. There was a very good book uh, which was published uh, after 1972 called Steam on the Veld um and um i have a, i have it in my collection i have a num number of books about south africa in my collection in my collection um and uh it, it details uh, how many of these locomotives were built and uh where they could be found this is clearly a, a local train much smaller one this is obviously a local train yeah a mixed train. There were freight that wherever freight trains ran, they invariably had a, a caboose which had three or four compartments. Uh, but it was generally only the, uh, the, the the black people who rode on these mixed trains. The, the the white people, the Europeans, as they were referred to in South Africa, generally had their own vehicles. Were there rules about who could become a, a locomotive driver or engineer? Would they be white or black, or could be either? Uh, yes, they would. They, they would own. They would only be uh, white. The, the 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 blacks were 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 engaged in locomotive cleaning, cleaning out the ash. Uh, but uh, actually, on the lo locomotive in South Africa, it was whites only. It was a different story in Mozambique. Some in, in Mozambique there were there were. Uh, black people on the footplate, and also in, when I went to Rhodesia in 1975, there were some blacks as well there. And did that rule apply to the fireman as well as the driver yes. or engineer? It was a, it was a whites only closed shop in South Africa. These 14 CRB locomotives were, were exceptionally loud. It's a pity that I never had any uh, 16 millimeter camera to record sound as well, but uh, I have my memories. Retrospectively, 50 odd years later, I wish I'd have uh, been more choosy about what pictures I took. Uh, waiting for better better weather or um, better planning but we only had a limited amount of time and we had our jobs back in back in England and in my case Germany now this is this is in Grahamstown this is another line um, this line went from Port Alfred on the coast via Grahamstown to East London 
Um, and um, the locomotives of Grahamstown Depot were all super clean. They were in very, very good state of uh, cleanliness. It was really the luck of the draw. We didn't have any idea about where photo locations were. These are the two people who did the driving for us. I met this guy about 10 years ago at the Continental Railway Circle meeting. He'd uh, fathered four children and had grandchildren by this time. Uh, now this is between um, East London and Port Elizabeth, there were a couple of branch lines linked all, all, all along closed. This is a very rural loco part of the world, one train a day. This is a class 19D. The 19D class were very numerous, 337 altogether. They were built by various builders, um, some by uh, Bayer, Pe Be Bayer Peacock, some by North British, some by Henschel. And some of the newer ones, they were built up until 1951, had these uh, uh, different tenders from the rest of the class. Rather American looking, I th always thought. Very light rail here, which dictates uh, only a low axle load. All long since closed, these lines are all closed at the turn of the century. Were there ha hazards you had to face in terms of snakes or other livestock? We only had one snake um, seen. That was in Mozambique when a black mamba, an absolutely deadly uh, snake, crossed our path on a sandy road. Uh, we were in the car at the time, but we didn't see any other nasty uh, insects or snakes on any of the uh, uh, on any of our um, uh, travels in 1972. We did run over a couple of uh, uh, wild rabbits um, uh, at night time because they were blared, they were blared, by their, their sight was uh, attracted by the car lights, but uh, that was the only mishap. Now we're in Port Elizabeth now. Port Elizabeth is, is uh, a major port city in the south of on the Indian Ocean and it was a suburban service from Port Elizabeth to Utenhaga, which is about 35 kilometers which in the morning and evening had a rush hour with trains every every few minutes. Uh, unfortunately, the, the weather when we were in Port Elizabeth was not as good as it was later in the tour. But there were also uh, lots and lots of local freights as well from the port area. So what was the main motive power on these commuter trains? Well, the, the, the attraction with the Port Elizabeth Suburban Service was the 16 CR Pacifics, which were 462 wheel arrangement, which were quite rare in South Africa. And, and, and uh, the 16 CRs had been uh, degraded in, in um, power from mainline duties to lesser duties by 1972 but they were they were uh, built in england uh, for the best part and um, uh, uh, this was the only place where 16 crs could be seen 
There was also 15 AR, which was built around 1914, uh, which were also quite numerous uh, to be found in the Port Elizabeth area. And uh, the class 24, which were post-war built. And the 16 CRs were, were kept by and large in very um, good condition, had a regular crew who looked after their steed well. I rather fancy this region here is all rather built up now. There were two stations on this suburban service which were very, very attractive. They were called Red House and Dispatch. They were at the end of the line, uh, and this was a, a, a white-only residential area. Apart from uh, Joe Berg, Lorenko Marks and Butterworth, we didn't have any pre-booked hotel accommodation. We found accommodation on spec quite easily, um, uh, generally... Um, uh, Bed and breakfast was, was about three or three rand fifty to five rand. It was about one one sixty to the pound. Um, I remember my first salary in uh, Frankfurt in seventy two was two thousand and six marks Deutsche marks per month before tax. So that was really quite good. But the Brits who were among us, I don't know what they were. If they were work, working for BR, they would, be get, they would be lucky to be earning 15 quid a week. So um, we had to be a bit, bit careful on, on the money. And uh, one hotel where we stayed in, in the Cape uh, Eastern region in, in um, um, near um, Middleburg, we had a wonderful uh, deal where we could go out on the line for three hours and do line siding and come back for breakfast at 10 o'clock. And uh, uh, it was also an evening meal part of the deal. The commercial hotel in Middleburg, Cape Eastern, was absolutely fantastic. Were most of these uh, locomotives named as well as having, obviously having numbers? There was, there was one, one of the 16 CRs was named. It was called Utenhagen, number 837. But no, names were only given to the 25 NC class, basically they are, because the shed foreman, Mr. Watson, was a very keen enthusiast and yeah, the class 25 non-condensers all had girls' names. But that was the exception. This is the class 14 or maybe class 12. They were virtually identical. And because it was a short journey of 35 k's between Port Elizabeth and Utenhagen, there was no opportunity to turn the locomotive, but generally locomotives ran chimney first. This is a class 11. Uh, they were built around 1905 up to 1910, built, built in England. What were they used for, Mike? They were used for short distance transfer trips. Not a very scenic location here, as you can see, but uh, uh, this is just in the, in the immediate port area. Uh, we were never quite sure what security would be in a port area, so we uh, pitched our location, what we thought would be in a safe area. As we found out that it was a public footpath for the, for the Blacks as well, so we, we, we weren't uh, accosted anywhere here. Where we were accosted by the police was in the vicinity of, of Bloemfontein. Uh, when we get round to looking at um, reel three and four, where the, weather, where the weather was absolutely spectacular and sunny, uh, we found a location on the Bethlehem line, which was just wonderful. Uh, but a policeman came along and wanted to see our identity. 
which we, we also had photo permits in advance, which was very, very helpful. Now, this is one of the class 24. These are these post-war 284s, of which there were 100. The railways in South Africa were nationalized in 1910 and were given numbers from one till one to 25. And the class one, three, four, five, six were the oldest. They by and large all been withdrawn by 1972. This is one of the S2 class, 080, built in Germany by Krupp, of which there were also a hundred. They were generally just used for shunting, <clears throat> but occasionally I'll put out online freights like this one here. Now that's the end of the uh, three foot six gauge in Port Elizabeth. There was also a narrow gauge line from uh, a station called Humewood Road in Port Elizabeth, which went a long, long way, 170 kilometers in the direction of Cape Town, but it didn't go anywhere. It was a, um, a, a terminus at Aventura, um, which was the same type of locomotives as in Natal, but it also had some 282 class, NG15. Um, and there were several mines in this locality. Uh, and sometimes trains were double headed. That's clearly a good spot to blow the sludge out of the boiler. Yes, this is this is this is a bridge called the Van Steidens Bridge. It was uh, the only major engineering work on this line. It was generally quite flat countryside along the coast. And there weren't any passenger trains, but there was a tourist train uh, which ran at weekends. But did you say that this line was long since closed as well? I think it is closed. Yes, I've got. Uh, I, I have. I have a list of uh, lines that which were closed between. 1986. The first closures occurred in 1986 through till about uh, the turn of the century. Um, I'd have to look in my uh, list to find out if the line is open or not. But I doubt it would, if in, in, in today's lorry infested South Africa, it would have a reason to exist. Now, this is the, at the very end of the line at Aventura. And uh, these, these narrow gauge garrets had a, uh, had a swivel seat where the driver could choose to sit outside if, if he wished. 
as there wasn't a great deal of room for two men in the cab. In the cab, in the cab. 